fiery horse with the speed of light, a clod of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. Jeff Ward came into the West with his wife Ada and his young son and settled on a homestead claim a few miles from the town of Clearwater. After years of hard work, Jeff and Ada managed to prove up their claim. During this time, their son Jimmy had reached the age of eight, and during those years, Ada had become increasingly unhappy. She finally decided on a drastic course of action. Little Jimmy was asleep when she announced her decision. Jeff. I'm going home to Denver. To Denver? <laughs> you mean you're going to leave me, Ada? Not permanently, I'm sure. What do you mean by that? Jeff, I'm going to give you a chance to prove that you're the man I believed you were when we married. You mean my gambling, huh? Yes. When you can show more love for me and Jimmy than you do for Joe Kirk's tavern, I'll come home. You're going to take Jimmy with you? No, Jeff, I'm not. But Ada, he needs his mother. Right now, Jimmy needs a father. In the past year, he hasn't seen enough of you to hardly know you are his father. Yeah. See what you mean. Will you... Will you take good care of him, Jeff? Yeah, Ada. I promise. Keep that promise for six months, Jeff. And I'll come home. It was almost a month later, and Jeff Ward's promises to his wife had proved no more worthy than they had before she left. The hawk-faced dealer in Joe Kirk's gambling house raked in the chips from the table, then looked coldly at Jeff. You light four chips, Ward, pay up. Let me have a stack of ten blue ones, will you? I'll pay up when I win a pot. Nothing doing's cashing the line in here, and you know it. As much as I've lost over this table, you can trust me for just ten more. Not me, I don't trust nobody. I'll see Joe Kirk about this. He'll let you know where I stand with him. You bet he will. You may learn how I stand with him. Now get away from that chair. Let somebody else sit in with cash. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had made camp beside a small stream that cut through a deep and timbered glade. 
Toto was preparing supper on the glowing coals of a campfire when the masked man said quietly, Toto, looks like we're going to have company for supper. Oh, little boy with knapsack. Together, they watched the approach of a very small lad who was having difficulty walking under the weight of a clumsily rolled blanket which he carried strapped to his tiny shoulders. When he was certain that the boy saw them, the Lone Ranger greeted him pleasantly. Good evening, young fellow. Hey, you're wearing a mask. Are you a bandit? <laughs> no, I'm not a bandit. Neither is Tonto. Then why do you wear a mask if you're not an outlaw? Oh, I have a special reason. But don't be afraid. Tonto and I are your friends. I'm not afraid. I watched you ride in here and make camp a little while ago. Well, uh, won't you join us for supper? <laughs> don't mind if I do. I'm kind of hungry. Good. We have plenty to share. I thought maybe you'd let me roll up my blanket by your fire tonight. Certainly. We're glad to have company. Help him off with his blanket roll, Tonto. Uh, oh, it's plenty big and plenty heavy. Uh. Yes, it's mighty heavy to carry for 20 miles. 20 miles? Huh? Have you walked that far? Sure. It must have been all of 20 miles. <laughs> Thanks, Indian. Um, my name, Tonto. Mine's Jimmy. <laughs> Are you traveling far, Jimmy? Not very far. I guess I'm almost there now. I'm going to Denver. You know where Denver is? Yes, Tonto and I have been there many times. Oh, you have? Then maybe you know my mother. She's there. Oh, who is your mother? Ada Ward. She went to Denver to see Grandma and Grandpa. No, I don't believe I know her, Jimmy. But is your father's name Jeff Ward? Sure. How'd you know that? Oh, I've heard of him. Fish ready to eat now, Kimasabi. All right, Jimmy. Here's part of my gear. Get you in and help yourself. Golly, this is swell. Eaten by a campfire. And while we eat, you can tell Toto and me all about your mother and dad. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Clearwater, Jeff Ward entered Joe Kirk's office at the tavern. I want to talk to you a minute, Joe. Yeah, I want to talk to you, Jeff. Close the door and sit down. Since when isn't my credit good in your place, Joe? Your dealer just refused to advance me ten chips. I know. I told him to turn you down. You told him to? Yeah. He did it on my orders. Here's why I did. See these? Yeah, I see them. IOUs. $5,000 worth of them. But my homestead claim stands back of them, Joe. You know that. Yeah, I know it. But that's all a place is worth. Mine now, Jeff, not yours. You mean you're going to take my farm? I will, unless you listen to reason. How do you mean? A couple of friends of mine hit town today. They've got a little job to pull off, but uh, they need another man. Why don't you help them? Well, i got plenty to do here at the tavern. Now, Jeff, if you'll help out my friends, I'll tear up these IOUs and give you a little cash to boot. Well, what is it they want done? I'd rather they tell you about that. Is what they want done on the level? Why? If it's dishonest, I'm not going to do it. Listen, Jeff, you've got a wife and kid. You've almost lost your wife already. And if she finds out you gamble away your homestead, she'll take the boy. She'll wash you out complete. But you wouldn't take my farm away from me, would you? I'll pay you back eventually. I don't do business that way. Unless you help out my friends, I'm taking over that spread of yours within a week. So make up your mind. All right. Where are these two friends of yours? I don't want you talking to them in time. They'll drop around to your place and tell you what they want done. Right. Meanwhile, could I... Could I get back in the game for an hour or so, Joe? Sure. Here's some chips. But when they're gone, don't expect any more. I'll get going, Jeff. Darkness had fallen over the secluded camp of the Lone Ranger long before young Jimmy Ward had finished eating the ample supper Tonto placed before him. As he ate, he told how lonely he had been since his mother went away and how he had decided to go after her. Then the good food and the warm fire brought on drowsiness, and as Tonto began to clean up the camp and gear, the boy fell asleep. It was then that the masked man spoke. Little boys are poor judges of distance. 
He doesn't know Denver is 200 miles from here. <laughs> Not right. Him think Denver just over hill, maybe. <laughs> yes, he doesn't realize he's not more than two miles from his own cabin. Oh, him say 20 miles. <laughs> uh, what we do with boy, Kimasali? I'm going to saddle Silver and take him home. I don't think he'll wake up. Maybe his father worry about him now. I doubt that, Toto. It's my guess Jeff Ward's in town. Doesn't know where his son is. In fact, we should teach Jeff Ward a lesson he'll never forget. And how we do that? I, I've been thinking it over. Well, I take Jimmy back home and put him to bed. I want you to ride into town. Uh -huh. I'll write out a telegram to Jimmy's mother. I want you to send it to her. Then find Jeff Ward and bring him home. I want to talk to him. Uh -huh. Me saddle scout and super. As the Lone Ranger anticipated, young Jimmy was so tired by his two-mile journey carrying the heavy blanket roll that he never awoke when Tonto picked him up and handed him into the arms of the masked man. A half hour later, he was sound asleep in his own bed, totally unaware that he was not sleeping underneath the blanket of stars outside. The Lone Ranger closed the door of the bedroom and sat down in the living room to wait for Tonto and Jeff Ward. Soon he heard two horses approaching, and he wondered if Tonto had met Ward on the way into town. Though puzzled, he did not get up from the chair as he heard a knock at the door. Come in. I hope we find your home, Ward. Hey, he's masked, but what's the idea? Hey, what's the idea of the mask, Ward? Isn't in practice already? <laughs> I'm in the habit of wearing a mask. You don't mind, do you? No, me and Pete don't mind. Only we're kind of surprised. By what Joe Kirk told us about you, we didn't think you was a back trailer. Joe Kirk's got a lot to learn about me. We thought you was a tenderfoot. In fact, me and Pete didn't favor taking you in with us. Only Joe Kirk insisted. Did he, uh, did he tell you what we wanted to discuss with you? No. Have a chair. Uh, hey. You tell it, Pug. First off, we want to know for sure you won't back out on us after we explain. Joe told you I'd see it through, didn't he? Yes, he did. He said you'd have to, or else. Or else what? It'd foreclose on this spread you've got here. You wouldn't want that to happen, would you? No. Then you work with me and Pete like we tell you, and Joe Kirk will tear up them IOUs he's got. And that's not all. You'll come out with some cash besides. Then let's hear the proposition. Well, here it is. The stage from Denver comes through about daybreak, day after tomorrow. Huh? We'll be carrying the payroll for the mine at Clearwater. Me and Pete are going to hold it up when it reaches the top of the grade near the old pine tree. You know what I mean. Yes, I know the place. But where do I come in on the deal? It's this way. They may have detectives riding as passengers in the stage. We want you to go to Beaver Falls. You board the stage as a passenger. Then when me and Pug stick it up, you'll be in a position to keep the passengers from causing trouble. You savvy? Yes. I understand. Of course, you may not have any trouble at all. If there's no detectives aboard and nobody goes for a gun, it'll be easy for uh, you. In fact, nobody will know you're in on the job. You can ride on after the holdup and nobody will suspect you. You see, me and Pete don't want nothing to upset our plans. We want you to be riding inside as a passenger just in case. Yeah. Can we depend on you, Ward? Yes. You can depend on me to be there. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way to talk, Ward. Uh, now, one more thing. Yes? You'd better ride out of here before daybreak. You want to be in Beaver Falls when the stage comes through. I understand. And uh, where will I meet you after the holdup? In Joe Kirk's office at his tavern. He'll tear up the IOUs when we split the door. Now, come on, Pug. Yeah. You better get going. I've got to turn in and get some sleep. Yeah. Now, by the way, yeah. you won't be wearing a mask when you're on the stage. We got to know what you look like. Yeah, I forgot about that. Take off that mask and let's have a look at you. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes... Please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
To continue our story, two bandits, Pug Owens and Pete Lather, had mistaken the Lone Ranger for Jeff Ward, whom they expected to help them in robbing the stage from Denver. After making the arrangements and still thinking they were talking to Jeff Ward, Pug and Pete asked the masked man to remove his mask so they'd know him later on. You be riding the stage. You look like any other passenger to me and Pete. Sure. We gotta see what you look like so we don't make any mistake and maybe shoot you if there's trouble. So let's have a look at you, Ward. You hear that horse? Yeah, it must be yours, Ward. We left ours in the timber back of the house. Yes, it's mine. He's hitched out front. What about it? Both of you'd better get out of here. Someone's coming up the trail. How do you know? That horse of mine hears him. That's why I nickered. You better hurry. I want you to be seen hanging around my place. I reckon you're right. Come on. Yeah, we'll see you later, Ward. Right off, you saw someone gets here. You can hear them coming up the trail now. Pug and Pete rushed out the back door. They didn't know the great white stallion Silver had recognized the approach of Tonto's horse scout and had nickered and had been answered by the latter. They were well away from the cabin when Tonto entered with Jeff Ward. This is Jeff Ward, Kimasali. Come in, Ward. I've been waiting for you. Yeah, the Indian said you'd be here. I, mean, I wasn't expecting anything like this. How do you mean? Joe Kirk said two fellows would be around to talk things over with me. But he didn't say one was an Indian and the other would be wearing a mask. I see. Well, don't let that bother you. <laughs> in your business, I guess. A mask comes in right handy, huh? Yes, very handy. Oh, did Kirk explain what this is about? No. But I've got an idea. Well, it's a stage holdup. Are you willing to help out? I sure don't like the idea. But I guess I've got no choice in the matter. How do you mean? I'm in a tough spot. See the pitch in with you two in this robbery? I'll lose everything I've got, including my family. Your family? Yeah, my family. I've got a little boy sleeping in that room yonder. Yes, I saw him. And I've got a wife in Denver. I've made a mess of things, mister, a mighty bad mess. Haven't done right by my family, and I stand to lose everything I've got. But you think by going through with this robbery, it will straighten everything out, huh? Yeah. Joe Kirk keeps his word, it will. And he'd better. Or I'll kill him. I see. Well, you go to Beaver Falls and get on the stage there as if you're a passenger. And you and the Indian will do the robbing yourselves? The stage will be stopped at the old pine tree on the Denver Trail. I know where it is. What do you want me to do? Nothing. Just see that no passenger leaves the coach during the whole lift. What about my boy Jimmy? He'll be left here by himself. It won't be the first time he's been left to look out for himself. Bullet board. No, I reckon not. But... But what? Well, if something should happen and maybe I'd be shot and killed, or he'd be left here alone. It might be days before anyone would think to come up here looking for him. I... I'll be riding as a passenger on the coach. I could take him along with me. Nobody would suspect a man with a youngster. All right. And be ready to ride out before daybreak. You need plenty of time to get to Beaver Falls. The stage from Denver had reached Beaver Falls, and the tired horses had been exchanged for fresh ones. But the driver did not pull out for Clearwater. There was an air of impatience among the passengers. Oh, driver. Yes, Mrs. Ward? Hasn't he arrived yet? Not yet. We pulled in here ahead of time, so he should be riding in any time now. Here comes somebody now. Oh, yes. I'll go meet him in case it's him. I'll stay here by mistake. We won't see him. Oh, oh, there. Oh, oh, boy. Oh. Golly, Daddy. There's a stagecoach now. All right, Jimmy. Take my hand and slide to the ground. Don't let me fall, Daddy. I won't. 
There you are, Jimmy. Well, Easy there, there, young fella. Hello. Howdy, mister. You Jeff Ward? What did you say? I said, are you Jeff Ward? Sure, mister. That's my daddy's name. My name's Jimmy. Good. We've been waiting for you, Ward. Well, waiting for me? Yeah. We got in a half hour ahead of time. The sheriff's telegram was waiting for us. He said you might be a little late getting here as you were toting double. <laughs> oh, Daddy, look! There's Mama! Ada! Well, wow. Jimmy! Daddy didn't tell me we were going to meet you, Mama. Surprised him, eh, Ward? I can <laughs> kiss Mama, Jimmy. <laughs> Golly, but I'm surprised. I'm not. Let me kiss your father. Jeff. Ada. Oh, Jeff, so good to see you and Jimmy again. And you're so brave. Brave? The sheriff said in his telegram that when you heard about the plan to stick up the stage, you insisted on coming to Beaver Falls and riding shotgun until we got to Clearwater. Of course, I knew why you did that, Jeff. You knew I was on the stage. Oh, Jeff, you're you're so brave to do this. Where do you figure the sidewinders will try to hold us up, Ward? Didn't it? Didn't the sheriff tell you? No, he just said you'd explain. I figured, however, that the most likely spot would be at the top of the grade near the old pine tree. That's it. Then we'll be ready for him, won't we? So leave your horse and the stage company will take care of him. You'll find a new shotgun with plenty of ammunition up on the box. Just climb up and we'll be getting on our way. Oh, Daddy, let me ride up there with you. No, Jimmy, you'd better ride inside with your mother. You might get hurt riding up there. All right. And I'm going to tell her a secret I didn't tell you. A secret? Sure. About an Indian named Tano and a masked man who rides a big white horse. What, what do you know about an Indian named Tonto and a masked man? <laughs> I told you I had a secret. The Indian and the masked man are friends of mine, and I'm going to tell Mama all about them. <laughs> Why'd we stop here, Kimasami? I told the sheriff we'd wait here for him and his deputies. Oh, stage comes soon now. Yes, it's due any minute. Get your what? hands up or I'll drop you in your tracks. Who's that? Get them up, both of you. You're coming. Do as they say, Tonto. They've got the drop on us. Uh, you bet I get the drop on you, you two-time and sidewinder. One movement, I'll blow you apart. Pug, is this the masked man you told me about? He's the one, all right. Yeah, but who's the Indian? You didn't see him at the ward's place. I know him. You do? He's the Indian who came to my place last night and told Jeff Ward somebody wanted to see him. He and Jeff left the tavern together. Sure, that's it. They're working in cahoots. Ward double crosses just like you guessed, Joe. Things didn't work out like you figured, did they, masked man? Listen, the stage's coming up over the grade now. Hey, we can't stand here, Joe. Hug, you and Pete go on and stick it up like you planned the first place. I don't want to be seen by the driver. He knows me. Yeah, he know you, sure. Come on, Pete. Yeah, we'll meet you where we cut up the horses, Joe. Right, get moving. Now, mister, you and your Indian pal can shuck them guns. And then I'll take that mask off your face. Unbuckle your gun belts and let them drop to the ground. <laughs> Wipe that sneer off your face and drop them guns. I suggest you check your own gun before getting so tough, Kurt. Check my gun? Uh, you don't think I'm falling for a stupid trick like that, do you? Give me that gun. You fool. There, that's better. But- it misfired. Grab him, Toto. Um, you got him. I had to wait until your friends left before I did that, Kirk. Their guns were loaded. Well, so was mine. Oh, you're mistaken. I saw to that when I ransacked your office early this morning to get these. Where'd you get those IOUs? I just took them. I dropped into your place in disguise to check on your games. I've done a lot of crooked gamblers, but you're about the most brazen of them all. I'm giving these back to Ward. You can't do that. It's robbery. You're a fine one to be talking about robbery. You'll never get away with this, mister. My boys get through with that job down there. They'll... They'll be either dead or in jail. What? The sheriff and his deputies have been waiting for them to ride into sight. Did you say the sheriff? Yes, that's right. Come on, Kirk. We'll join him. The shooting's over now. The sheriff wanted you alive. He's got a lot of score to settle with you. That evening, Jeff Ward and his wife and son had a happy reunion. But as darkness closed down on their cabin, 
Jimmy fell asleep in his father's arms. Jeff and Ada quietly put the little fellow to bed. When they returned to the living room, Jeff said, Ada, I I can't go through with it. I've got to tell you the truth. The truth about what, Jeff? Sit down, honey. I'll tell you everything. For the next 30 minutes, Jeff told his sordid story. How he had neglected little Jimmy. How he had gambled in Joe Kirk's tavern until he had lost his home. And then he told how, in desperation, he had agreed to take part in the robbery of the stage, believing that the masked man was one of the robbers. When he had finished, Ada put her arms about his shoulders and kissed him. But you've learned your lesson, haven't you, Jeff? Yes, and it's been a bitter one, Ada. I'll never gamble again. And I'll be a good father to Jimmy. But there's one thing I don't understand. What is it? How you came to be on the stage. Why, I got Jimmy's telegram. Telegram? From Jimmy? It said, Daddy needs you. Come home, please. But Jimmy couldn't send a telegram. It was signed, Jimmy, by permission of a friend. But... Oh, now I understand. Then he must have met the masked man before I did. Just like he said. I'm sure he did, Jeff. Jimmy wouldn't lie. And he said Tonto told him a real secret. Did he tell you what it was? Yes. He said the masked man is the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. (laughs) 